There's a lot to get to tonight, lots going on. Um, but I want to tell you, the first person we're going to bring on the show tonight, the first guest, is going to be the great Chuck Rosenberg. And we're going to have him here live in just a moment because um, I think we need somebody that's as big a brain and as well experienced as Chuck is to try to answer some big basic questions about what just happened today with Organization One. Not Individual One, that's the president. Uh, not Law Firm A, that's Gregory Craig's law firm. Not Magazine One, that's the National Enquirer, which may be losing its immunity deal. No, this is about Organization One, uh, which is WikiLeaks, per their description in the indictment that Robert Mueller and the special counsel's office filed last summer against an even dozen um, military officers from the GRU in Russia. Uh, quote, indictment. Uh, the grand jury for the District of Columbia charges count one, conspiracy to commit an offense against the United States. Quote, in or around 2016, the Russian Federation op operated a military intelligence agency called the Main Intelligence Directorate of the General Staff, a.k.a. the GRU. Specific units of the GRU conducted large-scale cyber operations to interfere with the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The defendants were GRU officers who knowingly and intentionally conspired to gain unauthorized access to hack into the computers of U.S. persons and entities involved in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, to steal documents from those computers, to stage releases of the stolen documents, to interfere with the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Starting in at least March of 2016, the conspirators used a variety of means to hack the email accounts of volunteers and employees of the U.S. presidential campaign of Hillary Clinton, including the email account of Clinton, the Clinton campaign's chairman. By in or around the following month, April 2016, the conspirators also hacked into the computer networks of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and the Democratic National Committee, the National Democratic Party. The conspirators covertly monitor the computers of dozens of DCCC and DNC employees, implanted hundreds of files containing malicious computer code, malware, and stole emails and other documents from the DCCC and DNC. By in or around that same month, April 2016, the conspirators began to plan the release of materials stolen from the Clinton campaign and the two Democratic Party organizations. Beginning in or around June 2016, the conspirators staged and released tens of thousands of the stolen emails and documents. They did so using fictitious online personas, including DC Leaks and Guccifer 2.0. The conspirators also used the Guccifer 2.0 persona to release additional stolen documents through a website maintained by an organization, Organization One, WikiLeaks, that had previously posted documents stolen from U.S. persons, entities, and the U.S. government. Organization One is WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks is the organization whose founder was arrested today in London pending extradition to the United States. Now, according to the special counsel's office and this live indictment that has since been handed off to the National Security Division at the Justice Department, here's how prosecutors say WikiLeaks helped in the Russian military intelligence operation that attacked our election in 2016. Uh, this is from page 17 of the indictment. Use of Organization One, use of WikiLeaks. Quote, in order to expand their interference into the 2016 U.S. presidential election, the conspirators, meaning the defendants, the GRU officers, they transferred many of the documents they stole from the DNC and the chairman of the Clinton campaign to WikiLeaks. The conspirators, the Russian military intelligence officers, posing as Guccifer 2.0, discussed the release of the stolen documents and the timing of those releases with WikiLeaks to heighten their impact on the 2016 U.S. presidential election. On or about June 22nd of 2016, WikiLeaks sent a private message to Guccifer 2.0 to send any new material stolen from the DNC here for us to review, and it will have a much higher impact than what you are doing. Less than a month later, on or about July 6, 2016, WikiLeaks added, quote, if you have anything Hillary related, we want it in the next two days, preferably, because the Democratic National Convention is approaching and she will solidify Bernie supporters behind her afterwards. The conspirators responded, okay, I see. WikiLeaks explained, quote, we think Trump has only a 25% chance of winning against Hillary, so conflict between Bernie and Hillary is interesting, meaning send me that stuff. 
Between June and July, the indictment explains how WikiLeaks allegedly got all the stuff they got from these Russian military intelligence officers. And then, quote, on or about July 22nd, 2016, WikiLeaks released over 20,000 emails and other documents stolen from the DNC network by the conspirators. This release occurred approximately three days before the start of the DNC for maximum impact. Got to make sure those Bernie supporters never, ever cross over and agree to vote for Clinton. Then a month before the election, just as the Access Hollywood tape was coming out and the Trump campaign was nearly imploding, just moments after the release of the Access Hollywood tape, on October 7th, 2016, WikiLeaks released the first set of emails from the chairman of the Clinton campaign that had been stolen by Officer Lukashev and his Russian military intelligence co-conspirators. Between on or about October 7th and November 7th, Organization One, WikiLeaks, released approximately 33 tranches of documents that had been stolen from the chair of the Clinton campaign. In total, over 50,000 stolen documents were released. So WikiLeaks is the entity, according to prosecutors, that liaised with Russian military intelligence to get the best stuff that would hurt Clinton the most, soliciting specific stuff about Hillary that would hurt Hillary the most, specifically both in terms of the timing and the content of what they wanted. They liaised with Russian military intelligence to time the release of the documents that the GRU officers had stolen so as to inflict maximum political damage on the Clinton campaign and to help Trump the most and to make sure specifically that Bernie Sanders supporters never, ever, ever would consider voting for Clinton. During the time that WikiLeaks was liaising with Russian military intelligence in order to accomplish all this stuff, WikiLeaks was also in direct contact with the president's eldest son, with Don Jr., advising him on how to better circulate the documents that the GRU had stolen for maximum impact. What link exactly his father should mention and that he should tweet out to make sure that the Russian documents got the widest distribution? Don Jr. appears to have been psyched about that particular outreach from WikiLeaks. He turned right around and posted exactly what they told him to post. Posted that link exactly as they told him to post it. WikiLeaks also gave the Trump campaign, they gave Don Jr., login information for a website criticizing Trump's friendliness toward Putin. WikiLeaks gave Don Jr. a heads up that that website was about to launch and information about how to break into that website. On that one, Don Jr. appears to have been slightly dumbfounded as to what he was supposed to do, so he just forwarded that information to lots of other people on the campaign. On election day, WikiLeaks sent this note to Don Jr., quote, Hi, Don. If your father loses, we think it is much more interesting, we think it is much more interesting if he does not concede and spends time challenging the media and other types of rigging that occurred, as he has implied that he might do. Election Day. If your father, quote, loses, we think it's much more interesting if he doesn't concede. So WikiLeaks in the 2016 campaign had kind of a singular role, right? They had a, a role that at least was, was very well appreciated. This just came out. This just came out. WikiLeaks. I love WikiLeaks. The Hillary Clinton documents released today by WikiLeaks. Exposed by WikiLeaks. We don't talk about WikiLeaks. They want to distract us from WikiLeaks. 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 The WikiLeaks revelations. They got it all down, folks. WikiLeaks. That was then. Uh, this was today. Do you still love WikiLeaks? Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. Wiki, wiki, wiki who now? Wiki, what's it? Wiki, what, what? Hmm, hmm, I can't, I can't hear. Oh, wiki, wiki, what, what? The thing with the mermaids? The wiki, what? <laughs> no, that's not my thing. Yes, actually, sir. Yes, it is your thing. It's your thing. It's been your thing for a long time. There are receipts. <laughs> and everybody in the whole wide world has them. Um, but the charges unsealed against Julian Assange um, from WikiLeaks uh, today. They're not about the hacking of computers and stealing of documents from the Clinton campaign and the Democrats by the Russian government during the campaign. The charges today are not about the WikiLeaks role in soliciting that material, asking for specific types of material that they wanted from the Russians, and then distributing those documents with help from the Trump campaign and the president's son. I mean, we know from the special counsel's indictments that prosecutors have plenty of evidence about WikiLeaks' involvement in that effort. 
they not only put all that information that I just read to you from the GRU indictment last summer, they restated a lot of that material in the more recent indictment of Trump political advisor Roger Stone. The government knows a lot about WikiLeaks working with Russian intelligence in their plot to mess with the 2016 election and to distribute the Russians' stolen stuff. The indictment and sealed today, though, it instead derives from a hack of classified information from U.S. government computers, which dates back to 2010. That was uh, tons of information, including classified information uh, related to the Afghanistan war, the Iraq war, uh, hundreds of thousands of documents from the State Department. The soldier who stole those huge databases of information and shipped them to WikiLeaks, that soldier was convicted at court martial and sentenced to 35 years in prison. Um, that soldier, who's now known as Chelsea Manning, she ultimately served seven years of that 35-year sentence before having the rest of her sentence commuted by President Obama. And that commutation was a dramatic thing. I mean, announced by the president himself right at the time, end of his time in office, because of that commutation, Chelsea Manning got out of prison in the spring of 2017. She otherwise would have been held in prison until the year 2045 but President Obama commuted her sentence. But that's the Chelsea Manning side of that leak and that hack dating back to 2010. When it comes to WikiLeaks, that posted all that material. Although the Justice Department confirmed at the time that they had an open and ongoing investigation into WikiLeaks' role in that hack and leak of classified material, an investigation, I should mention, that would have been led by the FBI at the time, which was led at the time by a man named Robert Mueller, who you may have heard of. Um, although WikiLeaks was the subject of an ongoing criminal investigation dating back to the Chelsea Manning case, under Obama, WikiLeaks never got charged. Chelsea Manning got charged, convicted, sentenced, served seven years, got the rest of her sentence commuted by President Obama. WikiLeaks never got charged by the Obama, during the Obama administration. And we, we will get expert advice on this in just a second. But to the extent that WikiLeaks was the entity that published the information that was stolen by Manning, the decision not to prosecute WikiLeaks does make sense under the First Amendment, right? I mean, anybody who works anywhere even remotely adjacent to the news business knows that the free press in this country has the right to publish even stolen material, even material obtained by seriously unsavory or illegal means. The free press is not responsible for the origins of any material that gets to us. Unless, of course, we are responsible for it because we had something to do with how it was Ill illegally obtained. I mean, I will oversimplify it here, but basically what you learn day one in this business is that if your source breaks into a safe and steals a document, your source may have committed a crime in so doing, but you won't, commit, you won't commit a crime just for publishing that document. That said, if you help your source break into the safe <laughs> or the locked filing cabinet or the encrypted and password protected government database, if you help in the stealing of classified material or anything, nothing about the First Amendment is going to insulate you from charges that you stole, regardless of whether or not you publish it, right? That's, I mean, you learn that day one in news business school. I mean, in the Assange indictment, Today, he is not charged with publishing the documents and materials that were taken by Chelsea Manning. In the indictment unsealed against Julian Assange today, he is not charged with publishing that material. He is charged with helping Chelsea Manning hack into a government database by trying to break a password on someone else's account so Chelsea Manning could continue to steal more documents without being noticed, without being found out. And that's fascinating, right? I mean, part of the strength of this case will obviously depend on the facts as alleged by prosecutors and what they can prove. But part of the strength of this case may depend on whether the court sees that act, that alleged act of WikiLeaks helping Manning try to crack into that database as if she were somebody else. Will the court see that as helping Chelsea Manning in her efforts to steal government documents and classified stuff? Or could the court see that as WikiLeaks just helping Chelsea Manning keep her identity secret? Right? You can see how that would have an important, that would be an important distinction when it comes to whether or not you can invoke the First Amendment as some sort of uh, defense to these kinds of charges. And we will see. But if prosecutors convince a court of the theory of the case that is laid out in today's indictment, that Julian Assange was helping Chelsea Manning steal classified material, steal government documents, if 
the government convinces a judge, convinces a jury of that, then Assange will be convicted on the same general theory of the case that convicted Manning. And this time there will be no President Obama to commute anyone's sentence. That said, this time there is a President Trump instead, uh, who today really is pretending that he never praised WikiLeaks, let alone more than 140 times while campaigning for president. While WikiLeaks was helping a slew of now indicted Russian military intelligence officers do what they could to sabotage Hillary Clinton to get Trump elected, and even to encourage Trump to go nuts and not accept the results if he lost. And so who knows what that means for how this will be handled by this president and by this Justice Department um, and by the prosecutors who filed this indictment against Assange last March, specifically four days before the statute of limitations expired on Assange's alleged crime. Four days before the expiry of the statute of limitations. And yes, the Obama administration clearly struggled, clearly wrestled with whether or not to charge Assange and WikiLeaks related to what Chelsea Manning stole and gave to them. But since that all happened, a whole new WikiLeaks chapter has opened, right? Since the whole Manning thing, WikiLeaks and Assange opened up a whole new lease on life in terms of how they operate, right? With Assange alleged by prosecutors to have played a major role in the Russian military intelligence operation that monkey wrenched the 2016 election. With Assange during that same 2016 campaign reportedly declining to post leaked documents or materials about the Russian government. With Assange, who's supposedly this big anti-secrecy activist, denouncing the Panama Papers reporting on massive international money laundering as an attack on Putin. With Assange getting hired by state-owned Russia Today TV. He got a TV show on the Russian state-owned... Yeah. I mean, what, what happened there, for one? <laughs> um, but now that Assange is arrested, what is likely to happen to the evidence Justice Department prosecutors have collected and already put into indictments about WikiLeaks as Organization One, right, for its role in the Russian election attack? And I am no lawyer, but um, from the way that I read this stuff today, I think if they are going to charge anything about Assange and his role in that attack, if they are going to charge anything against Assange other than what they've already put in this initial indictment, the way I read this, I think, they're going to have to do so really, really quickly, like imminently, like this isn't going to linger. And that is a heck of a prospect with the President of the United States right now saying, wiki who? Hmm? I don't, I've never... And the president's newly installed attorney general, the head of the Justice Department, now sitting on the Mueller report and not letting it out. I mean, if they're going to charge Assange with anything other than what they've charged him with today, they've got to do so right away. What do you think is going to happen? I don't know. I feel like at this point, all I know is that everything happens all at once. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.